Hey everyone, it's Sam McKay from Enterprise DNA here. I'm going to go over some basket analysis today, and I'm going to use an example from a recent Enterprise DNA uh, learning summit, um, and where we we did a full session on some cross selling and some techniques around that. But I want to do a bit of a breakout here and show you how we can compare products or work out uh, which products were bought together. Uh, by the same customers over a selected time frame, okay? And that's what this particular visualization is showing here. So I wanted to analyze, okay, well, I've got uh, my list of products. I wanted to see how many customers also, in, say, a particular time frame that I selected, also bought these other products at this uh, within that time frame, okay? So there's a little bit to it. Um, I, I have to say there's a big part of uh, a big part of this is really understanding this concept of context, okay? Um, and and how that flows through into your formulas because a big part of this is setting things up right uh, and then uh, getting the context right and overlaying um, the correct formula to it. And once you have it all set up well, you'll see that it's not you know, the, the formulas that you have to write are not extensive they're very achievable it's just understanding a few nuances to some some more advanced uh, functions um, but very doable so that's what I want to show you here so what I've done is I've set up a bit of a breakout here so we can really drill into this matrix this cross-selling matrix or this basket analysis and so I'm selecting say a time frame uh, a time frame here and I'm going to show you the formulas that go into making this work okay basically the key formula here which is this one here purchase both products right so how many customers purchased, say, product six and also purchased, say, product seven? Okay, and that's what this um, particular result right here is suggesting. Okay, 15. 15 out of all customers. Now, I think there, um, if memory serves me correct, there is maybe 300 customers or something like that it's, it's a really relevant here the, the, the key thing I want to show is the formula okay how does the actual formula work and I'm going to go through it um, I'm going to go through it step by step now I want everyone to focus on this particular formula that I'm highlighting right now okay because this is the key key formula that we um, we need to ultimately use to get this to work obviously we're going to have to have some inputs here but basically what we what we're trying to do think logically we're trying to compare customers who bought say a list of customers who bought say this product so based on the context that might be coming from uh, this particular part of the matrix how many um, customers and who those customers were we want to we want a full list of those customers but then we want to uh, compare that to a list of customers who purchased say the product from this particular part of the matrix the top side of this uh, table or this matrix that we have here okay so so it's doing lot it's doing the logic that you would just think in your mind before even writing any decks right it's comparing one list of customers to another list of customers and what intersect does it calculates or it allows us to compare the one table so the initial purchase coming from this context here with a comparison list of customers that are being created by this context here right the comparison purchase and then what intersect does is it leaves a table we all we ultimately have a table uh, of all of the customers who were in this table and also in this table okay and that's how we then get the amount of customers who had purchased both because they appeared in this table and they appeared in this table and then when we wrap intersect and count rows count rows is just going to count up the amount of customers who are left over so how many unique customers are left over once we compare the first table with the second table okay so hopefully that's making sense it's, it's once you once i once you go through that you know slowly the logic slowly it actually uh, certainly in my mind makes a, a lot more sense now what we have to do is how do we actually create these tables right now this is the i guess the trickier part um how, how what formulas do we need to to utilize here now i've used variables in my view far superior way to set this up rather than have it all in this one formula it makes it a lot easier to read in terms of what you're doing now the initial purchase here is, is very easy right what values does is it uh, can virtually create a list of customers right 
And so an easy way for us to create this list of customers is to just create it normally with the uh, with the standard context that can be created with our model. So this particular column here, if we just have a quick look at it, this comes from, um, I'm just down here, this comes from the products table. Now let's have a quick look at our products table here. So our products table is just in our standard model here. Okay, so this is a bit more of a complex model and those who attended the Learning Summit um, and also all members are able to download this because it's now uh, within Enterprise DNA Online. Um, but this is a this is a pretty complex model, but um, well, there's a lot going on in the model, but I've, I've simplified the core model, I call the core model. And products is linked up with a simple relationship down to our sales table, right? So natural context is gonna be at play here. And this natural context is gonna allow us to easily work out a table of our customers who have purchased a product because context will be applied here and then we will simply get a list of all of our customers based on who purchased that particular product uh, using values so that's going to create the table that we need now this is the more i guess complex one okay is the comparison purchase so getting another table of customers who purchased this particular product right so we are, we need to generate some a different a different context from uh, from some other column. Okay. Now, quick review of how you do this in the model. Now, the thing is, you can, it's it's you can't utilize the same column here because it's going to get confused. It's going to say, okay, well, the context here, regardless of what row I'm in here, is always going to be product nine. But we need to change it for every single column there. Okay. And so what I've done is I created a brand new table which I have uh, sitting down here. Uh, comparison products this one here so this is a I call them supporting tables I just have them sitting down the bottom of my um, in my data modeling area and so this table is really simple right it is just a exact replica of the products table but only the columns that we care about only the columns that we want to have a look at okay and so then what I've done is I've created this formula which allows me to create this list of customers based on the context coming from that particular table or that particular column within that table so because you'll see here that this particular column up here is coming from the comparison products index right so that particular table has no physical relationship so i've got to create virtual relationships to be able to create this additional table of customers who are purchasing these these particular um products right and that's what this particular formula does now we want to do exactly what we did here right we want to create a list of customers, a table of customers, and that's what um, values allows us to do. And if it's inside of calculate table, calculate table allows you to return a table virtually. Okay. And remember, this is a virtual table down here that we're ultimately going to need inside of intersect. So this is going to create a list of customers, but we're going to create it via a new context. And we're going to create that context virtually via utilizing tree tears. Okay. And so we're creating a virtual relationship between the index column and in our comparison products and us production. Uh, sorry, our product description index in the sales table. Okay, so that's what Treat has does. It allows you to create this virtual relationship. Now, the, uh, and I use utilize this in a number of different areas. Sometimes in budgeting, um, in, a lot in budgeting. Actually, a lot of budgeting analysis that that I do inside of Power BI. But this is another great technique you can utilize to simplify your model because you could create physical relationships here but i believe that it is, it is i guess a little bit cleaner in my view when you can just create this simple extension of your um, calculate table function um, utilizing tree tabs. i think it just makes your core model look a lot cleaner now the only other thing you have to do here is you need to go remove uh, remove the context from the products table. So this is a little bit of a little bit of a, a trick here, a little bit of advanced knowledge required here. But if you didn't utilize this uh, all products, then you would not be able to remove the physical. You have to remove the physical relationship tied between products and sales before you then go and put on the virtual relationship between the index uh, column inside the comparison products table and the product description index inside the sales table. So 
obviously there's a little bit to that to this okay um but i wanted to just do a little bit of a breakout here because i know i get a lot of requests for sort of basket analysis and people who are interested in it and i just thought well let's just do a breakout session and have a talk about the 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 ultimate formula that you would you would want to use to utilize this um uh, to create a matrix of you know who bought what between um, what time range. Now the great thing about this is you've got to remember that these are all these tables here are created um, are created uh, dynamically. So we can change the time frame, which is in our model, and we will, we would get different results inside of the um, inside of the matrix, and we would be able to see okay, well which customers purchased any of these products over this time frame and also these products here and this is how you can look for up you know there's lots of great things that you can do from a business perspective here you can look for up sales cross sales etc etc okay i'm gonna round off there uh, hopefully you enjoyed this one uh, if you did uh, throw the video a like really appreciate it and uh, don't forget to also su subscribe to enterprise uh, dna tv heaps of great content coming out to you okay all the best